Today, we'll be recapping the 2016 film The Accountant, which combines action, crime, and thriller genres. The movie follows the story of a math genius who uses his exceptional skills to uncover financial discrepancies for a new client. However, his activities attract the attention of the Treasury Department, and as they close in on him, a series of violent events unfold, leading to an increasing body count. But before we start, please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. The film opens with a mysterious man calmly navigating through a bar filled with lifeless bodies that have been shot. As he ascends the stairs, he overhears someone pleading for mercy. Moving past more deceased individuals, he eventually arrives at the door of the room where the desperate plea is coming from. Suddenly, a sudden noise interrupts the begging, suggesting a swift and grim conclusion to the situation. The next scene introduces a title card indicating a flashback set approximately 30 years ago at the Harbor Neuroscience Institute in New Hampshire. The institute is depicted as a grand residence nestled within a forested area. In a living room, two young boys are present, each with distinct behaviors. One of them remains composed while seated in a chair, while the other opens a puzzle box and swiftly starts assembling it. The boy working on the puzzle displays signs of agitation, shaking, and muttering to himself. Another young girl is also in the room, accompanied by a caregiver who struggles to put her shoes on. The girl suddenly lets out a piercing scream and strikes her own head, seemingly unable to communicate her distress. Meanwhile, the boy completing the puzzle becomes increasingly agitated as he realizes one piece is missing, repeating his urgent need to finish the puzzle. Surprisingly, the young girl stops screaming and reaches under the table to retrieve the missing puzzle piece. She hands it to the boy, and in a moment of connection, they share a direct gaze. The boy proceeds to complete the puzzle, revealing that he has assembled it upside down without having seen the image of Muhammad Ali that was intended to guide him. In the adjacent room, a psychologist engages in a discussion with the parents of the two boys. A noticeable sign on the refrigerator displays simple drawings of six stick figure faces representing different emotions such as happiness, anger, sadness, and more. The conversation revolves around the boy who was assembling the puzzle and his specific challenges. The psychologist mentions his sensitivity to bright lights and loud noises. The boy is described as being stubborn and fixated on certain things, like wearing only one specific t-shirt, which the psychologist explains is a result of tactile sensitivity. It is also noted that the boy tends to manifest his anxiety through repetitive behaviors, such as shaking, finger tapping, and self-talk. During the conversation, the mother reveals that the father is in the military, leading to frequent relocations that have prevented the boy from forming friendships. Consequently, his younger brother remains his only companion. The father appears disinterested in the discussion, displaying a lack of engagement. The psychologist suggests the option of leaving the boy at the institute, where he could receive specialized support, learn coping mechanisms, and benefit from a calm and nurturing environment that doesn't exacerbate his sensitivities. However, the father firmly rejects the suggestion, stating that if the boy is sensitive to light and sound, he needs to be exposed to more of those stimuli, as the world will not accommodate his special needs. In the present day, Christian Wolf, a peculiar accountant, uses his unconventional methods to assist a struggling farmer and his wife. He advises them on declaring the wife's jewelry-making hobby as a home business, subtly guiding them through deductions. After their meeting, Christian showcases his exceptional marksmanship skills by shooting accurately at cantaloupes with faces drawn on them, surprising the skeptical farmer who had doubted his ability. Ray King, the director of financial crimes at the Treasury Department, confronts Mary Beth Medina, a young analyst, about her hidden criminal past. He shows her the evidence of her sealed juvenile record and informs her that lying on her application is a felony. Ray then presents her with a stack of photographs revealing a mysterious accountant who works for dangerous criminals worldwide. He assigns Mary Beth the task of uncovering the accountant's identity before his retirement, threatening to expose her past if she fails to comply. In Zurich, a stockbroker is confronted by an assassin who was hired to send him a message for shorting stocks of the assassin's boss company. The stockbroker remains arrogant and dismissive, prompting the assassin to deliver a swift and skillful beating. 
Realizing the seriousness of the situation, the stockbroker agrees to stop shorting stocks altogether. The assassin leaves a warning and departs. Meanwhile, Christian, living a highly ritualized and minimalist life, engages in his own strict routines, including a unique dinner preparation and subjecting himself to intense sensory stimuli before taking his medication. Throughout the film, flashbacks reveal Christian's tumultuous childhood, marked by his mother's departure due to the overwhelming responsibilities of caring for her special needs children. Young Christian exhibits uncontrollable anger and destructive behavior, while his younger brother watches resentfully. In the present day, Christian engages in a phone conversation with a woman known as The Voice, who communicates with a flat effect and describes her emotions and actions rather than expressing them directly. The Voice suggests a safer job opportunity at Living Robotics and discusses the sale of Christian's valuable assets, demonstrating her concern for his well-being. Christian tends to his storage facility, where he keeps a trailer containing valuable paintings, cash, passports, gold bullion, collectible comic books, and an arsenal of weapons. He also possesses a copy of the stick figure face diagram, which holds significance to him. Meanwhile, Mary Beth's investigation progresses as she unravels the accountant's aliases, discovering that they are linked to renowned mathematicians Carl Gauss and Lewis Carroll, known for their contributions to mathematics and suspected cases of Asperger's. With the help of her FBI friends, they create a composite image based on profile pictures and connect the accountant to a violent incident where he single-handedly attacked a club belonging to the Gambino crime family, killing multiple individuals including little Nicky, the boss's son. The attack is captured on an audio recording, revealing a plea for mercy before a swift fatal blow. Mary Beth analyzes the audio file, employing manipulation techniques to isolate a faint second voice muttering a nursery rhyme repeatedly. She shares the file with experts who identify it as a repetitive behavior often seen in individuals who have experienced trauma during childhood. The experts suggest that the person responsible for the recording may have a neurological disorder like autism, explaining the flat effect and repetitive nature despite the intense circumstances. In another childhood flashback, Christian's family resides in Indonesia, where the boys are subjected to rigorous combat training under the supervision of an older, merciless instructor. The father passively observes the training, engrossed in his newspaper. When the instructor suggests that the boys have endured enough, the father remarks that if that were the case, the instructor himself would be lying on the ground, wounded. Young Christian, speaking in Indonesian, insists that the training should continue, while his younger brother remains fiercely loyal but visibly fatigued from the ordeal. Christian arrives at Living Robotics to investigate a financial discrepancy and meets with the CFO and the CEO's sister. The CFO is defensive about an internal accountant's involvement and downplays the complexity of the company's records. Christian brushes off the concerns and requests the necessary documents. He also meets with the CEO, Lamar, who shows him the positive impact of their prosthetics and promises full cooperation. The next day, Christian finds Dana Cummings, the in-house accountant, asleep in the conference room and declines her offer of assistance. He proceeds with his ritualistic work, meticulously examining files and using whiteboards and windows for his notes. During his lunch break, Christian sits near Dana and engages in a conversation about their career choices. While Dana tries to make small talk and shares her aspirations, Christian remains polite but doesn't understand her jokes. They bond over a shared appreciation for dogs playing poker artwork. Later, Christian works through the night and discovers that $61 million is missing from the company. He begins explaining his findings to Dana, but they are interrupted by the CEO's sister, who dismisses Dana and expects a comprehensive report from Christian soon. The next morning, Christian arrives at Living Robotics only to find his investigation disrupted as files are being packed up and his work erased. Lamar, the CEO, explains that the CFO's death was a suicide due to guilt over the missing money, valuing their friendship above all else. Frustrated, Christian returns home and struggles with his rituals and coping mechanisms, displaying self-harm behavior before eventually calming down. A flashback reveals Christian in prison, receiving guidance from an older man on understanding social cues and emotions, who shares information about his criminal clients.
Christian visits the farmer and his wife again to practice shooting, triggering a childhood flashback of his father encouraging him to stand up to bullies. Unbeknownst to Christian, the assassin's henchmen have followed him and hold the couple hostage. One of the henchmen is shot by a sniper, and Christian disables their vehicle before confronting and killing the remaining henchmen. The henchman hands over Dana's ID but refuses to reveal the employer. Christian then contacts The Voice, who advises him to flee town immediately and ensures his new identity is established. Mary Beth continues her investigation with the help of an IRS friend, searching through tax returns and a list of famous mathematicians to find the accountant's aliases. Christian goes to Dana's apartment to ensure her safety, spotting someone following her through the window. He enters through a service entrance, swiftly climbing the stairs. In the hallway, he encounters two guards who he quickly dispatches. Meanwhile, the two delivery men burst into Dana's apartment, but she puts up a fight, eventually locking herself in the bathroom. Christian enters, eliminating one of the attackers and engaging in a fight with the other. Dana is surprised to see Christian, witnessing his ruthless efficiency. Christian then takes Dana to his storage unit, where she defies his instructions and enters. Inside, she discovers his cash, valuable paintings, and a collection of weapons, leading to her questioning how he acquired such items, to which he explains they were received as payment. Mary Beth and her friend discover some intriguing information regarding the accountant named Christian Wolf. One of the accountants with the matching profile declared an income of over $500,000 but was found to be clean during an audit. However, the other accountant, associated with ZZZ Accounting, declared a significantly lower income of $75,000. Further investigation reveals that ZZZ Accounting is linked to three neighboring businesses, each reporting incomes over $400,000, with the accountant serving as their financial advisor. They also uncover substantial charitable contributions made to Harbor Neuroscience. Mary Beth shares her findings with Ray during a press conference, and they decide to investigate ZZZ Accounting and Christian Wolf further. Christian and Dana continue their conversation in the hotel room, discussing the intricate financial scheme at Living Robotics. Christian reveals that the $61 million was actually embezzled, but cleverly hidden under different accounts, making it appear as if the money was not missing. As Christian paces around the room, repeating something to himself, Dana urges him to sit with her. Christian opens up about his high-functioning autism, explaining his difficulty in connecting with others despite his desire to do so. Dana shares a personal story of her own, recounting her ambitious plan to buy an expensive gown for her high school prom, but ultimately finding unexpected luck in a casino, allowing her to fulfill her dream. Curious about their current location, Dana questions Christian's choice of the fancy hotel, to which he deflects, mentioning the good water pressure and nice towels as small pleasures he wanted her to enjoy. Just as the moment between them becomes intimate, Christian abruptly sits up and makes a reference to an old electronics chain, diverting the conversation. Christian realizes that Living Robotics is engaged in a scam similar to one he encountered before, involving stealing money from the company and reinvesting it to inflate its value. Believing Lamar's sister to be involved, he follows the suspicious assassin from her building but is met with gunfire. Discovering Lamar's sister dead, Christian's investigation takes a dangerous turn. Meanwhile, Mary Beth and Ray uncover Christian's abandoned home, equipped with surveillance cameras and weapons, and Ray reveals that Francis Silverberg, a former accountant for criminal organizations, mentored Christian and warned him about the dangers of staying in one place. Christian's past is revealed as he is moved to a new facility to assist the government in tracking terrorists. Ray, who had previously interviewed Francis in prison, feels guilty for not taking him seriously, leading to Francis' torture and death at the hands of the Gambino family. Learning of Francis' fate, Christian escapes from the facility by incapacitating a guard with a coffee thermos. Meanwhile, Ray shares the story of Christian's troubled past, involving his violent reaction at his mother's funeral and the accidental death of his father. Mary Beth opens up about her own background, sharing that she resorted to violence to protect her sister from a drug dealer, ultimately leading to her sister's positive life outcome. Ray recounts his encounter with Christian at the Gambino headquarters, where Christian spared his life after realizing he was a devoted father. He then shares how the voice's tips led to his successful cases, increasing his career profile. 
Ray plans to retire, but passes on the responsibility to marry Beth after she receives a call from the voice at Christian's house, instructing her to tell Ray to remove his feet from the coffee table, indicating her acceptance of the role. Christian confronts Lamar, the CEO of Living Robotics, and eliminates his henchmen one by one. leaving only one and the assassin, who turns out to be Christian's younger brother, Braxton. Braxton is surprised to see Christian after 10 years of separation and blames him for their father's death. They engage in a physical confrontation, during which Christian allows Braxton to unleash his anger. Lamar witnesses the encounter on surveillance cameras and is bewildered. Eventually, Christian shoots Lamar and casually apologizes to Braxton, declaring that he had to finish what he started. Christian then prepares to leave, leaving a note for Dana and driving away with his trailer, promising Braxton that they will meet again in about a week. Dana receives a package in her apartment containing a painting, initially expecting to find the Pollock artwork. However, to her surprise, she discovers a painting of dogs playing poker. She laughs at the unexpected choice, but then notices that the canvas appears to be loose. Curiosity peaked, she pulls at it and uncovers the hidden Pollock painting underneath. The revelation leaves her intrigued and wondering about the significance of this unexpected find. In the final scene, at Harbor Neuroscience, two parents discuss their son's situation with the psychologist, who happens to be Justine's father. As they talk, their son explores the house and encounters Justine, a resident who is nonverbal but communicates using a computer. Justine briefly calms down and smiles at the boy, prompting the parents to leave their son with her while they continue their tour. The psychologist reveals to the parents that Justine is his daughter and the inspiration behind starting the Institute. They inquire about the Institute's funding, and he mentions generous benefactors. Curious about Justine's powerful computer, the father mentions his engineering background and compares its capabilities to hacking the Pentagon. Meanwhile, Justine sits at her computer and types a message, connecting with the boy. It is revealed through a photo on the wall that Justine is the young girl from the beginning of the film who formed a connection with a young Christian over a puzzle. The scene highlights the impact of human connections and the journey that led to the establishment of Harbor Neuroscience. That's all about the movie The Accountant. We would love to hear your thoughts on the movie. Please share your comments and don't forget to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Your feedback encourages us to create more recaps like this one. If you have any requests for specific movies you'd like us to recap, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching and see you next time.